Hello everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. It's about that time. Let's go take that walk and see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer comes from Beachwood Barbecue and Brewing. These guys are out of California. Uh, this is a beer that is not available here in Virginia. Uh, this is an American Porter, they're calling it, but it's a 9.2% alcohol. So I consider that an Imperial Porter. Uh, so, uh, big 22 ounce farmer. I got this from Donovan and the guys out there at Serval Liquors out in San Diego. Uh, if you're not in the San Diego area, jump on the internet, craftcity.com. Uh, they have a ton of uh, beers available on their website that you can buy, and they will pack them up and ship them right to your door, guys. Uh, uh, great aspect uh, for beers that you cannot get in your area. As long as your state allows them to ship beers to your state, you can order from them, and they'll pack it up very, very nicely and uh, ship it to your door. So. Uh, Check them out. If you're in the San Diego area, drop in to serve all the liquors and tell Diamond and the guys I said hello. And if you're not, jump on the internet at craftcity.com and uh, order you something up. That's what I do. All right, let's get on with this one. Great big beer, big 22 ounce bomber. Commercial note says the Mocha machine is a well engineered endeavor of massive aromatics and a rich flavor brewed with an array of British and German malts. This burly brew is infused with masterfully roasted coffee from Portola Coffee Lab in Costa Mesa, California. And then it is aged on cocoa nibs from Ecuador, adding an awesomely deep dimension of fudge. Sounds pretty tasty. Uh, ABV, I don't think I'm gonna have it. Let me take a quick look over here at Untap. Yep, they've got it at 46 IBUs, guys. Not bitter at all as far as that goes in the IBU range. Should be a nice, sweet, imperial uh, quarter or a double quarter at 9.2%. So, that's all we need to talk about. Let's get it open. Looking forward to this. Final beer of the evening for me. Nice hiss. Just a tad of smoke coming out. Enough to share, which I intend to do. And while I'm pouring this, I'll tell you the cuisine is barbecue. The cheeses are buttery, brie, gouda, gouda havarti, swiss. Goes well with your chocolate dishes. And the meat is beef, smoked meat, and grilled meat. Glass right of pint, Becker, Nine, Tom to Mug, Sign Sidel. I'm using my favorite tulip glass today, guys. And it says here, not recommended for sound of salaries. And the reason for that is, uh, it says here, Imperial Coffee Chocolate Porter. It's got coffee in it, so that's going to fade over time. So, as far as dating, I don't see anything that's standing out. I will look a little closer. I'm going to come back with a final jug and see if there's any kind of vintage or dating on the bottom. Uh, on that pour, just barely covering maybe an eighth of an inch head on that. Let's get it over to the light, see if I see any red rubiness. It has got a very slight red rubiness mahogany color down here on the fan part. The big bowl part up here is pretty dark. So, looks pretty impressive. Let's get it to the nose. Rich roasted malt, almost to the burnt characteristics. Hence of black molasses, caramel, and toffee, bittersweet chocolate, maybe even some tobacco or licorice in there. Probably going to have some dark fruit once it warms up. It smells very, very nice, guys. Wow. Awesome aroma. A lot of stuff going on in this beer. Let's dive in. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Dom, and all the guys out there at Serval Liquors. That's 
raspberry tasting nose. Very, very nice. Excellent aroma. Excellent taste. The only way I would say this could be better is to put it in a bourbon barrel for a while. And they may even do a version of that, I'm not sure. Beachwood Brewing is not available here. Another reason why I reach out to those guys out there on the West Coast, uh, Donovan and the guys out there at Thermal Liquors, to bring in some of that stuff that I cannot get my hands on here because there are a lot of awesome beers out there, guys. The biggest fuss I got about a lot of those beers out there, they don't date their stuff. I guess they figure they're going to sell it all and nobody cares. I would like to know a vintage of it. Is it a 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017? Put that on there so we'll know in case you want to do a vertical. You might want to buy uh, a 2015 and a 2017 and do a side by side and see how well it, it's cellared and how, how it come together over time. Well, even though it's not barrel aged, I don't think, I am getting a little bit of woodiness and coconut. coffee is really subdued. I'm, it's there, but it's not like it's an espresso, off-the-chain kind of coffee. And that may change as it comes to the room temperature. A lot of times those coffee flavors will come up as it warms up. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to step out on the deck and step on this for a little bit. What's left in the bottle, we'll pour her a glass and uh, maybe have me a little cigar while I'm sipping on this. All right, guys, I'm back. My sitting on about 30 minutes or so. <clears throat> Went very well with the Maduro wrap cigar I was smoking. <clears throat> very nice. Brown sugar, even black molasses, rich roasted malt. Uh, hence of some tobacco, licorice, a little bit of dark fruit in there. Very, very tasty, like I said earlier. The only way I think of this could be better than put it in a bourbon barrel for a little while. But then you're going to lose the coffee notes. Uh, didn't get a lot of coffee notes uh, when I first opened it up. There are some subtle coffee notes now. But this, looking at the bottle when I come back, they've got a, a little date code in white over here. And there's nothing there. But on the side of the label here, they've got 04 2017. And this is 08 of 2017. So it's four months in the bottle. The coffee has probably faded a little bit by now. Um, it's just like hops, guys. I'll tell you this all the time. So, uh, if you've got a coffee beer, uh, that, co that coffee will fade over time just like hops do. So uh, if you want to drink these coffee beers as, as fresh as possible to get to that aromatic coffee notes. This is a little subdued. It's not to the espresso coffee or anything like that, but it's very subtle. It's, it's there. I am getting it now. It's warmed up. Uh, I am getting a little bit of coffee notes there. Not espresso or anything, but it's there. Final chug. A very nice, very tasty beer. For 9.2%, alcohol is very well hidden. Wish I'd have tasted a little fresher than when I've got it now. Uh, I got a feeling the coffee notes would have been a little more prominent than what they are now, four months at the bottom. But other than that, it does have a date on it. It's got the month and the year, and that's all we need. We don't need the day. The day is irrelevant on this style of beer. It doesn't matter if it was done on April the 1st or April the 30th. It does not matter to me. Uh, but they, they're doing what needs to be done. Uh, so, uh, doesn't have the IBUs on here as far as I've seen, but it does have the ABV, and it does have the bottom on date of 04 2017. So, uh, uh, the IBUs are not critical on this style of beer. Uh, Untapped does have it at 46, so it tells you it's a very easy drinking, sweeter side of the beer. I'm not sure whether they use lactose in the brewing. Uh, process or not, uh, it's very nice. The only drawback I can see is that the coffee is not as strong as I would wish it would be with them having coffee written on the label and they're using coffee in the brewing process. So, Just a keynote there, uh, if you see something like this and you want to buy it, 
drink it as fresh as possible. Treat it like an IPA or a double IPA as far as freshness goes and you'll get more coffee the fresher that it is. Just like hops. You'll get more hop aroma in the IPAs and the double IPAs the fresher that it is. So that's the only thing. But I do think it's an eight beer, guys. And I, I'm going to grade it accordingly. I'm going to give this an, uh, an eight, which is a minus uh, numeric rate for me would be a 92. Very tasty beer, very nice beer. I would buy this beer if I could get it here, if it wasn't too expensive. So, uh, and distribution adds cost to beer. If you can pick it up in the state that it's brewed in, locally, or even at the brewery, it's going to cost you less than it is once it comes all the way across the United States and goes to the distribution process here. Here and then gets to the store because everybody got their little hand down. Uh, the transportation adds cost to it, the distribution adds cost to it, and the store where you're buying it from will add a little more cost to it. So uh, I'm sure you can buy this cheaper in California than you can in Virginia if it was available here. So, with that being said, uh, let's run over to Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says 94 outstanding. I'm pretty close to that. Uh, it's not quite to the A category. A minus from those guys too. Uh, final check in, we run over to Untap. They have it at 4.21. As far as I'm concerned, that's their A minus to A category right there, guys. So it's a very tasty beer. It's worth picking up if you're into the style of beer and if you can get it fresh. Uh, if that's the key, if it's got coffee in it, get it fresh. Just like an IPA or a double IP. Pick it up fresh if you can. You'll get more of those notes if, uh, if it's got coffee in it. So, we're going to leave it there, guys. If you've had this uh, from Beachwood Brewing out of California, this is their Mocha Machine. Let me know what you think. Until we meet again, let's go see what's in the fridge.